Okay, the Six Sigma implementation <coughs> will require, uh, so the Six Sigma is a DMIAC, define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. And basically, implementing Six Sigma emphasizes uh, on defects per million opportunities uh, as a standard metric. And uh, in Six Sigma, there's a lot of uh, training is needed. So you have to provide uh, extensive uh, training uh, to understand the, uh, the concept of Six Sigma. <clears throat> and uh, this is, um, there's a mechanism involved in uh, coordinating the project-based uh, improvement, okay? And uh, there are corporate uh, sponsor, which are known as champions, and uh, the mechanisms uh, of improvement uh, require uh, people to be trained until the black belts, green belts, uh, green belts, yellow belts uh, status or level in which they can actually coordinate the improvement activities. And usually in Six Sigma, they have very uh, set, uh, they set stretch objectives, meaning, for example, uh, trying to achieve a higher level, you know, of uh, Sigma uh, resulting in less uh, defects. Um, and of course, Six Sigma cannot be accomplished without a major commitment from top level management. Okay, the next element in TKM is employee empowerment. Uh, so basically, uh, we must get employees to be involved in the improvement process, uh, whether it's pro for product or process improvement, because uh, a lot of uh, quality problems are due to process. 85% of quality problems are due to process and material. And uh, when we say empowerment, it means that the employee should be given, uh, you know, you should, you should create a communication networks and develop open and supportive supervisors that actually become their coach uh, rather than uh, uh, managers or just uh, dictating things to be done. So empowerment, empowerment means the workers will be uh, uh, involved in the production uh, process. So you move responsibility to employees, making decisions and so on, and building a high morale organization through creating uh, formal team structures in the organization. So everybody will be able to actually contribute to the um, improvement in organization. Okay. Uh, quality circles, QCC are very popular in uh, Japan, okay? Quality control circles <clears throat> is nothing but a group of employees who meet regularly to solve problems and are trained in planning, problem solving and statistical methods. Um, <clears throat> it is very effective when done properly. So what the group does is actually find a problem quality uh, issue, uh, you know, for example, from Pareto analysis, they find the highest defects uh, and, I try to uh, brainstorm and find uh, ways of trying to reduce those, uh, those defects. So it's very effective when done properly, structured and systematic way of uh, problem solving. Another element in TQM <coughs> as given in uh, you know, this text is benchmarking. So what is benchmarking? Benchmarking, what's benchmarking? Keyword is compare okay so keyword is compare so how do we compare with the best in the organization with the best in other organization best company best processors for improvement if we want to uh, ensure that we have a very uh, fast uh, you know good delivery process we should be benchmarking with uh, you know courier companies like DHL or FedEx Okay, so if we want to have, uh, you know, uh, fast production, uh, good production management system, you can benchmark with Toyota, for example, or if you want, you know, good engineering, uh, design, uh, sports uh, related, uh, you know, sports, sporty vehicles uh, of, of BMW says it is, you know, the... Uh, the slogan is the ultimate uh, driving machine. <laughs> so, so it depends, okay? So where benchmarking is trying to compare and 
of course there are steps for for comparing so you need to determine uh, what you want to benchmark i mean the process in which you want to benchmark whether it is the uh, r d process or the uh, purchasing process okay and you form a team you identify partners uh, normally you can benchmark with your non-competitors okay so you if i mean a competitor won't be able won't want you to benchmark the process okay and you collect and analyze benchmark information and take action to match or exceed the benchmark that means you try to create a process uh, that meets that that is uh, meeting the best best in class okay <clears throat> example uh, example of benchmarking best practices for resolving customer complaints so best practices for resolving customer complaints. make it easy to complain respond quickly to complaints resolve complaints on first contact so we can uh, look at uh, organizations which has you know done this uh, pretty good then we can we can uh, create uh, standard procedures for our own organization if the organization is quite large then probably you can go for internal benchmarking okay uh, where for example you know toyota um, benchmark toyota in thailand benchmark again okay, toyota indonesia indonesia in uh, benchmark with malaysia or even uh, the benchmark with the mother plant in Nagoya. So because the data is more accessible and uh, it can and should be established in a variety of areas. Again, whether it is uh, you know, the, the benefits, so we are looking at the benefits that is going to um, gain, gain across the organization. Now, uh, JIT, just in time, is uh, a system, a philosophy invented in Japan, especially, particularly Toyota. Okay, and how does it relate to quality? So imagine you are trying to get parts on time. Okay, so you need to only have one unit as your work in process. So you can only have you know the good parts or good. Um, space before you can actually use it so jit actually cuts the cost of quality or maybe you know you need to have quality before you can implement uh, jit okay but jit improves quality less inventory better uh, easier to employ jit system and it's based on poll system not push system poll means you only pull what is required for your process okay if you need five spare parts you need you only have five on the uh, work uh, whip okay work in process work in progress right um then production only when signal that means you only make when it is required when it is signal and uh, in jit it allows reduce inventory level which is uh, going to save money and uh, uh, not, not to save money inventory actually costs money and hides process and material problem inventory itself is not you know uh, high inventory is not good to uh, organizations okay right git encourages improved process and product quality but obviously during this covid time git is not really uh, working well because uh, it results into um, supply chain issues, supply chain uh, problem. Okay, so so you need you need to have inventory uh, during COVID uh, period. Now, Taguchi concepts uh, in TQM. Taguchi is a Taguchi method. It was is invented by Genichi Taguchi. Okay, Genichi Taguchi is one of the famous uh, quality guru but it's very engineering and experimental design methods uh, so it's very engineering very technical base it's an engineering and experimental design method to improve product and process quality whereby you will identify key component and key process variables affecting product variation so it tries to make the process robust so the keyword in taguchi quality robustness and uh, 
another concept of quality loss function and the concept of target oriented quality. When we say quality robustness, it means the ability of the product uh, to be uniform, uniformly produced in adverse manufacturing and environmental conditions. Not only uh, when they, they, are, they are uniform, uh, you know, you, you can actually, it's robust to different, uh, you know, harsh manufacturing conditions and also harsh environmental conditions by having uh, getting uh, optimization, not optimized, but uh, uh, getting the best combination of variables that is affecting the uh, product um, quality. Okay, so you remove the effects of adverse conditions and your small variation materials and process do not destroy the product quality. So it works, it's robust to different conditions. Another concept is important in Taguchi is the loss function. So the loss function shows that costs will increase as the product moves away from what the customer wants. So that's the layman word uh, language where you try to achieve target uh, quality, target oriented quality. Anything that deviates away from the target are going to result into costs. So costs, including uh, customer dissatisfaction, warranty, and so on. So the traditional conformance specification are too simplistic. So the traditional conformance specifications is actually using the uh, normal distribution. You have your target, and you can yeah, there is upper spec and lower spec. As long as it's within this distribution, this normal distribution, uh, upper limit, lower limit, it's okay, but this is too simplistic. Okay, so that's why Taguchi introduced this quality loss function, whereby loss is loss to society. Anything that uh, result into uh, loss, loss means you know the uh, you you should be producing at fifteen millimeter, for example. Anything that deviates, you produce fifteen point two is already point two deviation from that target 15.0 okay so anything away from this is actually loss this is the conformance oriented quality within three standardization as long as okay or is this this is the uniform distribution well this is uh, you know the western way of looking uh, into uh, product specifications okay so target oriented quality yields more product in the best category. And target oriented quality brings product towards the target uh, value. So uh, if you look at this quadratic function, so this is a quadratic function. So anything that away from the target are lost. So you try to achieve best, okay? So here result into high loss and here, as you go towards the target, it's low loss. So this is what Taguchi has proposed and there are uh, methods, uh, Taguchi methods to, to do experiments and to solve this and to find the, um, the best combination of variables that result into you no know, high quality. Now, the next thing is the, uh, the various tools that is used in uh, TPM is basically seven tools of quality of uh, quality okay of qc seven tools of qc so there are tools for generating ideas such as check sheet scatter diagram cost effect diagram and there are tools to organize data pareto chart flow chart as well as identifying problems which is the histogram well the traditional uh, conformance based histogram and also the spc chart so these are the these are the tools that is available I'm not going to explain in detail. You can look at other uh, references. So you have your check sheet, commonly used, uh, scatter diagram. Also, it's, a, it's showing the relationship between two variables. Okay, Y is equals to uh, AX plus C or AX minus C. Now, uh, for example, in this case, absenteeism tends to increase uh, so productivity reduce. Okay, productivity tends to the response is productivity reduce as absenteeism increases. Okay, well, this is the Ishikawa diagram, the famous Ishikawa diagram. 
cause and effect diagram. And you have a Pareto chart, which is actually 80-20, is now available in Excel. Flow chart, process the, a diagram, uh, describing the step in a process. The histogram, the distribution showing frequency of occurrence of variable, it is much, very much the uh, new, normal distribution or the conformance based uh, quality. So this is an example of the Pareto diagram. So, so what, what, is, what you have to do is actually to arrange highest to the lowest. So you, you collect all the uh, types of defects, your data, then you arrange from the highest to the lowest. What you do is you find the percentage. Percentage is actually the occurrences divided by the total for that particular type of defect. So for example, this 22.1%, it's coming from 61 divided by 276. So you do that for all. You do that for each and every item, 60.67%, 11, 9%, and so on, until you get 100%. And this is the cumulative. Cumulative means uh, the total, okay? Uh, adding up, for example, the cumulative for the first item uh, is 22.1%. So then the Cumulative for the first and the second item is 22.1 plus 16.67, which is 38.77%. Okay. So then you do it for all, and it must total up to 100%. Then only you transfer these so called uh, numbers into this graph. So basically, Excel, what is us is actually this is 61. And this, the, it, it is uh, equivalent to 22.2%. So you have this, this is the quantity on the left side, and this is the percent for the, on the right side exists, okay? And these are the, all the um, categories of uh, defects, right? So 80-20 rule. So 80-20 rule, this is the Pareto. Uh, in life also, we have 80-20 uh, rule. 80% of our time is spent on 20% of items, uh, things that we do, sleep, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, whatever you do, 20% of things, all right? 80% uh, of our income is spent on 20% of items, you know, we pay uh, our mortgage house, we pay our uh, car loans, it's only two, three items, but it amounts to 80%. So, so this is a, it's a good philosophy in life. So to improve, you need to, you know, find which is actually uh, wasting, our, wasting our resources. Right. The other one is a control chart. Control chart is a tool in which uh, you plot, you know, uh, value of a statistics. Okay. For example, weight. Weight of, you know, your weight, for example. And you calculate you plot you collect uh, like 20 20 points or 20 to 25 uh, data then you you can actually calculate upper control limit uh, you can use a formula x double bar plus a two r bar i'm not going to explain this uh, yeah, this is for advanced stage but but this is how you do it then you get the uh, upper control limit lower control limit and you plot the point to see whether it is within control in control or out of control. So what you do is, if it is out of control, you bring it back to in control. So this is in control limits within the control. So that as long as it's within here, it is within control. Okay. So the the bad, the good point, uh, the good thing about control chart is can we can predict the process. We can actually understand the process behavior. Okay. Uh, so that's the uh, statistical elements of quality. Uh, you know, improvement quality control. All right, so you use statistics and control charts to tell when to correct, uh, when to take corrective action. You drive process improvement, and uh, I've just mentioned to you just now for key steps: measure the process. When the change is indicated, find the assignable cause, eliminate and incorporate the cause, restart the revised process, and bring it back to control. So the the chart gives us um, it's like um, our dashboard, right? You can see what is going on. Uh, graphically uh, okay graphically we know whether the process is in control or out, out of control 
Now, an important element in TQM or any organization is the setting up of uh, inspection system. Inspection doesn't add value. Okay, it is cost to organization, but it is necessary activity. Well, in Muda, we say uh, it is necessary waste. <laughs> we, we cannot eliminate from, if you eliminate inspection, uh, unless you have fully automated, you can you know, inspect fully. So it involves examining item to see it is okay or NG. So the Japanese like the word okay, NG. Okay, ka, NG. Ka. So, so that's uh, to determine that. Eh? Uh, but of course, inspection can also uh, you want to measure, right? You can this is either attribute data or uh, variable data. Okay. Uh, it does it doesn't correct deficiency because you already make the product. It's already at the end of the line, or is in the, in the process in process inspection. You cannot do anything. And it is expensive, I told you just now, okay? It is it's not adding value, but you need to have it. So when you design an inspection system, when you design inspection system, or you think about how to, uh, you know, create your inspection process in your organization, this key question, when to inspect, okay? Is it before the process, after the process? Is it before this step? Where? in the process to be inspected okay the first process second process third process after welding uh, before stamping what who and how so these are questions if you can answer all these questions you have a good very you can, can create a good uh, you know uh, inspection a qc inspection system so when and where to inspect there are various places you know if you trace the uh, places in which you start the product it can be from the supplier, okay? So this is uh, at source or at your facility. This is incoming inspection or receiving inspection. So you must have receiving inspection, okay? And before costly or re irreversible process, when you make a cake, you make sure all the ingredients are right, you know, the quantity, because it's re irreversible. The cake will either you know become cake or it doesn't become okay. Okay, same in production, same in any processes. Casting is irreversible process. Welding is irreversible process. So you need to determine the parameters of the welding before you do the welding. So this is this is uh, in process nah, in process. Okay, so in process, incoming in process. This is also in process during the in-step, in-step by step production. This, when production or service is completed, then you, you create a finished uh, final goods, uh, final inspection or finished good inspection. Okay, final inspection, let's call it final inspection. Okay, or before delivery to the customer, still under final inspection, or you can call it a pre-delivery pre or delivery inspection. The point of contact of customers, uh, if there are quality issues, if there are things need to be resolved, you still can, you know, you need to uh, do inspection uh, at the customer's uh, point or customer's place. So where, uh, when and where. So this needs to be understood. You can create a flow chart for this. Create a flow chart or create an Excel sheet for this. No problem. Inspection, uh, source inspection. Okay, I've done it. So inspection is, is, is not really very uh, productive or very, you know, uh, very efficient. There are many problems. Fatigue, worker fatigue, measurement error, process variability, you know, uh, equipment error. And that's why you have GRNR. Right? If, if some of you have heard of GRNR, gauge reproducibility and repeatability. And you cannot inspect quality in the product because product is already being produced. You know the process has been uh, done. You, what you need to do is you need to have a robust design. Yeah, you need to have a robust. That's why you need Taguchi in, you know, uh, in process Taguchi methods. There is process optimization. You, can, you need to train employees and empower them. 
basically you need to build quality in the process sound processes are better solution quality in the process not after the process so have source inspe inspection where the concept is the next step is your customer Pokayoke is a Japanese concept, is a defect uh, prevention. Okay, it's a foolproof device. It is a defect prevention device. Okay, or technique uh, to, to pass only acceptable products. You can have check sheets, you can have, uh, you know, or even uh, mechanisms for that. Okay, so this example of survey industry inspection uh, at different uh, spaces, what to inspect and the standards, uh, same thing. So you can you can Google, you can find this. And TKM services is more difficult. Okay, but it's not to say cannot it cannot be done more difficult because it's more, more mainly uh, customer customer emotions, customer feelings, customer perception. So service quality perception depends on intangible difference between products and uh, intangible expectation customers have of, of those products because people have different experience and have different expectation. Those who have been abroad will have different expectations of the kinds of services. And those who have traveled extensively will probably have a different expectations then people who don't travel or who have not been abroad have never flown in a in a, what we call flown overseas for that matter uh, right so the operations manager must understand the tangible component of service is important that means design the service tangibles what do you mean by that you know it's very simple if you go to a restaurant there are chairs, tables, there are, you know, ornaments, there are the drawing, painting. So the tangibles, you know, will be able to have the ambience of uh, service quality. And the service process is important. Thus, that's why nine out of the 10 determinants of service quality is related to service process. So service process, process, how you design your process, huh? And uh, the service is judged against customer expectation. Of course, exceptions will occur. Okay, exceptions will occur. So the, the determinants of service quality, reliability, responsiveness, competence, you know, competence in possession of required knowledge to perform the service. The employee doing the job must be competent, able to answer questions, able to actually address um, um, what you call worries of customers. Courtesy, courtesy is human communication, credibility, security, understanding, knowing the customer. And this, there's only one tangible. Tangible is the physical evidence of the service. This is a Parasuraman uh, uh, service quality uh, dimensions. There is a surf qual. Okay, surf qual. You can refer to surf qual. Okay, so finally, service specification, you can see here in uh, aircraft, these are the certification, car, cargo door open one minute after arrival, this is after arrival, okay, fly door open, but of course, it, it has not shown here the engineering specification of making sure the engine actually works, <laughs> so that is, uh, those are not, and those are engineering uh, specification, the uh, safety specifications required for airworthiness, flying, and so on. Flight attendance on board. So these are more service, okay, service specifications. And you need to have a service recovery strategy, okay? I think I mentioned uh, that you need to have, for example, uh, a plan when service fails. For example, I went to a hotel, okay? Uh, and late night, I entered the room, was given a room, and when I entered the room, the room was not clean, not clean up. It's still, you know, the condition in which the, the previous uh, customer left dirty. I went down to the desk and said, you given me a room which was not ready. But the desk uh, attendant was very, the desk clerk was very good and said, I'm sorry, can I, can you wait for one minute, you know, we'll... We'll sort this out. 
what happened was uh, you know the the hotel gave me an upgrade from you know uh, you know the the cheap room <laughs> cheaper room give me a superior executive room so you know that is service recovery i forgot about that that dirty problem which i complain and i was so happy to get a new room so that is you know a service recovery i think many organizations uh, you have also as probably experienced yourself you know service recovery how to recover apologize and then make you know the customer excited about the uh, solving a problem uh, so the so problem that is uh, that the customer is facing okay so merits uh, this learn routine listen empathize apologize react notify so so i think many service organizations will have this uh, service recovery strategy computer services you know car sales and also service uh, uh, dealers and so on okay so thank you for listening uh, i hope you can uh, revise and listen from this lecture